Hey everybody, this is Bandor again. Welcome back. This is part six of our multi-part series on how to make a model in Blender and use Substance Painter to texture it and then bring it all into Second Life so that it looks as good as it could possibly look. So far, we've built our model. We've uh, used Substance Painter to create our ambient occlusion maps and we've brought those into Second Life, put them together, and we used Photoshop to take our shadow for the floor, the floor shadow from being a shadow on a white background to a shadow on a transparent background. So that's where we are now. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into Substance Painter and apply some textures to it so that you can see um, how cool that is. So let's go over to Substance Painter and we're going to play around with this. So the first thing I want to show you is that in Substance Painter you have all these different um, materials and you can get more. You can make your own if you use Substance Designer. You can actually create these. Um, but these are ones that come with it, and then I acquired some as well. So if you'll notice, these buttons here um, let you select different kinds of things. So these are materials. These are smart materials, which are kind of advanced materials that really play on all of the different maps that Substance Painter uses. Whereas materials are pretty basic. Um, it's just a simple texture that gets applied, and you can adjust the scale and rotate it and things like that. Uh, whereas smart materials have a lot of parameters. Sometimes they're configurable, sometimes uh, they're not, but they could be multiple uh, components that go into creating them. So let me show you um, the difference. If I take simple material like this one and I drag it on the wood, it applies it to the wood. I could do that for all of the parts, and you can see see what they look like. Um, zooming in on that, you can see it looks pretty cool, right? It's it's pretty well done. Much more realistic looking than trying to create these textures in Photoshop. And look, see how it's got. You can see the three dimensionality of the green of the wood. That's because the normal map for this. Um, material is included. So it's not just the diffuse, it's also the normal and the spec and everything in that material. And that's why that's why we're using this. Um, but you'll notice that it's pretty, pretty f consistent all the way across and pretty much flat um, as it's applied. If you look here, there's the layers tab. I can turn that off and just go back to the default where there's nothing applied or I can turn it back on. You can do things like um, combine them. But let's look at a smart material. So let's take a smart material like uh, like this one's pretty obvious, but you can see it's very distinctive. That's why, I, that's why I'll use it. Let's drag that on there. So it's yellow paint with like rusty areas in areas where the paint is rubbed off on the edges. Uh, and that's why some of those maps that we created are so important is because it gives you things like Substance Painter knows where the edges are. And since it knows where the edges are, it knows paint rubs off on those edges. And so whoever created this smart material set it up so that on the edges, the metal shows through. So you have places where metal shows through or the paint is kind of rubbing off. And then these are rough spots where um, it's like wear and tear. You even see back there, you can see where the paint's kind of bubbling up a little bit. And then over here, you have some discoloration in it. That's what happens with a smart material is you get all of these things applied. And if you look at in the layers tab, um, it's a folder as opposed to a single thing. So this, the, the plain old material is just this one little thing, but the smart material is a folder. And if you open up the folder, you can see, let me drag that down. You can see there's a whole bunch of things inside this one smart material. And you can make adjustments. So if I don't want that to be yellow, I can come in here and I can click on that. And then I can go down to the, the properties panel. You can see it's yellow. I can say, ah, I don't want it to be yellow. I want it to be bright red. So now it's red. Or I want it to be blue. So it's blue. And I don't have to do it. I can just adjust it to these these uh, parameters. And that's why, that's why it's kind of cool. So if I don't want that anymore, I can just hide it or I can click on it here and delete it and I can go back to the wood. So then I can apply the wood all over 
to all the wooden parts. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll come back once I have that done. Okay, I have now applied this this wood called Akaju, I don't know, Akajo wood to all of the wooden parts of this chair. Now we're going to put some textures on the cloth parts. But uh, let's do something like a leather. Let me see what I have in here. scroll down there's some leather here leather bag leather big grain microfiber oh that looks nice microfiber with some squares in it. this is just a simple the one next to it is just a simple microfiber let's do that let's put the microfiber on there and see what it looks like ta-da Ta -da. And ta -da. Now that looks pretty grainy to me. It looks doesn't look like microfiber. It looks like a macrofiber. So I can uh, adjust the scale of that texture on here by just going up to uh, to here. I have this. This is my back, and I have it selected. I can scroll down to the properties area. There's a scale right here. Let's just put in a two. There you go. There you go. That looks much better. So let's do the same thing for the back cushion. Go down here. Or scale scales right here. Put two. And then let's go to the front and do that for the seat cushion and set it to two as well. And there you go. Now you've applied it. We've applied it to. Did I do something? I did 21 there. Look at that. That's not good. Two. There I go. Now that's better. So that's the way we have it. Um, what I would like to do now is go ahead and export this. Um, assuming we have this where we want it. So this is, this is what I want my final chair to look like. It's it's not. I would, I would play with it a lot more. But we're going to export this and we're going to pull it into Second Life. So remember to export. You go up to File, Export Textures. And we're going to kind of do the opposite of what we did before. So this is all still set up. It remembered it from before. But remember, I turned off, I turned off everything except the AO. Well, I want to do the opposite. I want to go through here and turn everything on. But I no longer need the AO because I already got it, and I only need to get that once. The rest of them you get every time you change a texture. So I'm going to go ahead and turn these back on. Make sure that's off. Go through off. Okay, I'm going to continue to do that for all the rest of these. I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to watch me do that, and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, that is done. So now I just click Export. But before I do that, I want to clear out my uh, Export folder so I don't have anything floating around in there from before. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And then come back over here and hit Export. It's going to do its thing, and it's going to export all of these different models. And you can see how quick it is. It doesn't take any time at all. Boom. It just generated all those models. Now we're going to go back to Second Life and we're going to import all of those images that we just exported. We're going to say all of them and open. So that's going to take a while to do. I'll pause the video and I'll come back. Okay, it finished uploading all of the parts. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and start applying those textures to my furniture. I'm going to go to Edit Link and um, edit the link parts and let's go ahead and stick some of this on here like uh, this is slat right specular so the way I want to do that is you go over here and you pick slat right go to texture you're going to put the slat right diffuse on diffuse you're going to do the slat right normal on normal slat right shiny you're going to put the specular so then we're going to do slat left same thing slat left Diffuse goes here on the diffuse. Normal goes to normal, and shiny goes to or specular goes to specular. And so we do that for every single part that's listed here, and we'll go do that and come back when it's done. Okay, here we are. I've got it all done. You can see it's applied to the whole thing, and it looks pretty good. Looks just like it did in Substance Painter. So that's it for this video.